We're all experienced with life and death and the many ways either may present themselves to us. Death is the ominous presence in the back corner, the elephant in the room, only truly met by experiencing the passing of a loved one, acquaintance, acquaintance or stranger. I've been to funerals and celebrations of life for family members over the years. In my family, the only time we tend to have family reunions is when someone dies. Then we have their funeral or celebration at the family graveyard in Glens Ferry. And I know all, all of the people in this room have had some experience with death. Even with the promise of eternal life after death, dying is one of the scariest things to every organism on this planet. From the smallest ant to the biggest bear, it's the end of the line. And every fiber of our body does not want to meet the embrace of death after living. It doesn't help our brains cannot think of what life after death would feel like, look like, or smell like. It is the unknown, and the unknown is perhaps one of the most terrifying things for many of us. That fear manifests in other fears, like the fear of the dark or the fear of ghosts. Throughout the ages, cultures have had so many ways to respect and remember the dead, like burials. There are many ways to bury someone, different kinds of tombs, and different ways to prepare the body. As, as cultures have developed, they've created a day or days to remember the dead and to celebrate them. Halloween is a true melting pot of multiple different cultures' ideas on how to celebrate the dead, death, and a word off monsters. Another day would be All Saints Day, the day we remember those who have passed on and gone on before us. Dia de los Muertos, um, Latino cultures where the dead are remembered and celebrated, and so many others. There are many more things I could say about death, and most all of the people here have probably heard them. Many people who are much older and have been ordained in ministry have probably already written sermons detailing death, how to accept it, and the promise it brings to us about Jesus going before us to prepare a place for us, and certainly many other things. But I have a question, not about death, but its sibling life. Tell me, what does it mean to accept life? Life is a great thing about our planet. There's so much of it everywhere we look, and it's right there in front of our noses. Psalm 104 speaks of this and how God is such a part of the process of creating life. Part of the psalm says, You, O Lord, sets the, the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they flee. At the sound of your thunder they take flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass, so they might not again cover the earth. We, we can see this, when, see what the psalmist is talking about when we look across the lands, the mountains and meadows, look down into the rivers, streams, and oceans. Life can always be found mid-step in a swirling, anciently reliable dance of wonder and majesty that can be found if we choose to look. And it's easy to look away, to stop seeing, to pull away, and look only inside our immediate communi communities. Bubbles of familiarity, and away from the unknown of life. But something I know, and I'll continue to learn as I continue down a path filled with ecology. If we continue to look away, we will lose life. We will one day lose our siblings in life, the beings we see or don't see. From the earthworms which aerate and decompose things in the soil so that things may grow, to the mighty arctic lupin. If we look, we will see how each of our siblings of life and creation are in danger of extinction, an end to them all. If we turn a blind eye to it all, if we let the earth erode away, the topsoil disappear, watersheds become demolished, the animals will follow. The great cats will cease their prowls, the deer and elk will disappearing, powerful streams of salmon will come a memory of some time years in the past. Then with an ch entire chunk of life gone, we will follow not b far behind them, either because of a loss of a part of our very being or for from forgetting how to live. 
And I know this to be true, for I can tell you where each bone in your finger sits in a red panda's, or how similar we are to a gibbons or a Bengal tiger. Uh, I know I, I am not alone when I relish in the joys of creation, surrounded by ponderosa pines or the falling rain, sitting, connecting to dirt through gardening or by play. The psalmist understands this as the psalm continues, you make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills, giving drink to every wild animal. The wild asses quench their thirst by the streams. The birds of the air have their habitation. They sing among the branches from your lofty abode. You water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. Life is a lot of things. It's as complex as a heel monster or a glass-winged butterfly. All small pieces collected, created, forgotten, and found as we go through life. Several of these pieces, these parts, that come to reside within ourselves can be minuscule and unnoticed, but still important to who we are, like toes. But, another, but other parts, other experiences can weigh down the soul, weigh down the heart and body, burning through an energy stores. Sometimes these weighty experiences can drag us down and hide away the sunlight. But that's why we have each other as a community, as friends, to notice and to care when these pieces try to drown us with life. To see a friend's struggles and to give them strength, to tell them how important they are to you through words and actions. In Ecclesiastics 4, 9 through 12, it says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toll. For if they fall, one will lift up the other, but woe till one is alone and falls and does not have another to help. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though one might prevail against another, two will withstand one. A three-four cord is not quickly broken. It is when we create a community of friends and loved ones, a community that cares about everyone's well-being. They will notice when we start to drown and no matter how we are drowning, be it sorrows and depression or stress and panic, and the multitude of other ways life will try to drown us. When our community notices, they'll send out the cry for help, if that's what the situation demands. And no matter what, swim out with the raft. When our community notices a crisis, they spur into action, sending aid to strangers in need or spreading awareness and giving a voice to our siblings of life and the planet we call home. Being alive is one of the most spectacu spectacular, amazing things anything can be. There are so many things a being that has life is able to do. And the very last one is death. Death is the end of all things as we know them now, as they are. But there cannot be life without dying. If you go outside anywhere, especially now during fall, you can see the natural world preparing to die. The deciduous trees start the process of conserving resources. Leaves start changing colors and will eventually fall off. Temperatures start, to start decreasing as animals spend the season, finishing, preparing their food storage. At the same time this happens, we find this time pretty beautiful. Who hasn't stopped to marvel at the wonder of creation around this time? The changing of the leaves may be a sign of winter's coming. But the colors, the reds, oranges, the yellows, are really pretty. Not, not every leaf is quite the same as another. Without death companioning life, this season wouldn't be as beautiful as it is. Even more, the natural world wouldn't be as beautiful as it is now without death. Within a seasonal calendar, life dies near the end of fall and past winter, before resurrecting again in spring, blooming in summer, then repeating. The cycle of life and death happens all around us. Life can be pretty deceptive at first, with its unknowns, because deaths are as obvious to us as an excited puppy. Life's unknowns blend in a little more, like a polar bear in a snowstorm. These more camouflaged ones once started out as every single little thing, from eating a carrot to running a race. But as all of us have lived and breathed, these things, big and small, become known. Even though the longer you live and explore the world, 
the unknowns life tries to hide, there will always be one more thing around the corner. And that can be terrifying. I remember going snow tubing for the first time with my mom and sister a few years ago. It was Christmas break, and one of them came into my room asking me if I wanted to go. And I agreed. So I had no idea what snow tubing even was. I probably, I may have asked what it was, and the answer probably didn't tell me much. I may not have, but on the day we went up, I saw the snow tubing slope from our car, and I was terrified. When we got to Bogus, we were early, so the three of us spent some time exploring the snow piles further up the mountain, which meant I had time to build that fear or to let it go. I'm sure that worked out great, and it did for the most part until it was time for us to snow tube. I remember being apprehensive and extremely nervous about this thing. So when I went down the, snow, the slope for the first time, it was amazing. Absolutely had a blast after that first slide. For the next few trips, I went snow tubing. It wasn't as good nor as fun as that first time. Part of why the first time going down was so invigorating was the adrenaline rush, a mix of going down a mountain and the fear of it. This same thing is true with so many unknowns. They're scary. But after that first one, it might just become more appealing to you. It also helps when you have others t helping to walk with you through these unknowns. Pulling, through them, pulling you through them and out through the other side with strength and support. Our community, our friends, are there to cheer us through our unknowns while we do the same for them. Life is something great filled with complexities and hiding things and the untold, undone paths. Life is a crazy thing. We walk, run together through, side by side. When we neglect our, sibling, our brothers, sisters, and siblings in breath and nature, there is a void that opens within our communities, a void that we can heal and mend if we turn to look. Life is wonderful, yet yeah, wouldn't it be the same without death? Death is a mysterious and sometimes ominous thing, yet it's, no, its coming is known and anticipated, while life's unknowns often spring out at us with little warning. May we, may we live by looking at life and seeing our siblings in breath and giving them a place in our communities. Amen. As we enter into a time of response, please stand for our second hymn. 